Shalom. <laughs> so um, yesterday, in between Shabbat meals, Ruach HaKodesh was speaking to me. And what he was talking to me about is in the natural, whenever a, key, a king enters into a space, his subjects, his servants bow down to him. In, heart, in, in physical stature, they bow down. They take the knee. They bow their heads as well. They do not make direct eye contact with that king unless given permission. So all these things that we see unfolding in the world are signs. Matthew 24 talks about certain signs going on. But even the exposing that's going on. So Yahushua Hamashiach, our king, is the light of this world. As the light draws closer those things that were in the dark begin to be exposed. So all this exposing that's going on is a sign to Yashara, the remnant, that your redemption, your salvation, your king draws nigh. And the closer he gets, the more that's going to be exposed. So it's not meant for you to be afraid of these things. It's meant to rejoice for your behalf if you are in Yahusha. If you're abiding in Yahusha, but it's also meant for you to, to lament for those who aren't abiding in, in Yahusha. And for you to go out into his harvest as laborers. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. But the closer your king, our king draws nigh, we are supposed to bow down to him. So the more you see things being exposed, you know he's even closer than before. So we're supposed to take the posture of a servant. How do we do that? Prayer, confession, repentance daily, praying without ceasing, confessing our sin, repenting of that sin. So there's a lot of things that I want to come on here and say to you guys, but I can't. Ruach HaKodesh has already told me that not everybody that watches these videos ha is, has the ability to consume meat. There's a lot of people still on milk arguing about is his name Yahushua or Yahawashai arguing about if we're supposed to um, hold to the lunar calendar the ceremonial cal calendar or the civil calendar arguing about what day the Shabbat falls on arguing about whether or not we should wear head wraps or not arguing about whether we should have fringes or not it's still people arguing about these things that's milk there's meat that Yahuwah wants to feed to us but he, right now he doesn't have me doing that I do it on in other spaces but I can't do it on here because not everybody that watches these videos is able to consume meat and that's a problem for him because we ought to be able to teach other people by now a lot of us are out here and have it been in this truth for some years now way before all these masses started coming into it recently and still aren't able to teach because we're getting hung up and hooked up on milk and choking on the milk that we're taking in is way more than that that's going on. One of the things I will say is what he was revealing to me in the book of Leviticus, in chapter 7, verse 7, it talks about the sin and the trespass offering having one tour, one law. What he revealed to me is the sin offering is confession. The trespass offering is repentance. The reason why there's one Torah is because you can't repent unless you confess. Because otherwise, what are you repenting from? And repentance is turning away from sin and turning towards Yahuwah. It's two parts. Because if you turn away from sin but don't turn towards Yahuwah, eventually you're going to wind up sinning in a different way. You might not sin that way, but you'll sin a different way. And that goes to Yaakov or James 4 and 7 that tells us to submit ourselves to Yahuwah, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Your confession is you're submitting yourself to Yahuwah. Your resistance is turning to Yahuwah. And then the devil will flee. So you can't repent. It's impossible for you to repent unless you confess your sin. And Yahuwah's word says that if we, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and cleanse us of our sin. I might have said that backwards. Go read uh, 1 John 1, 8 to, 9, um, 8 to 10. He tells us that we have to confess our sin. Because again, what are you repenting from if you're not acknowledging the sin that, you, you, that you've, you've made? Repentance is not asking for forgiveness. Repentance is not apologizing to Yahuwah. Repentance is not sinning anymore. And 
a question I have for anybody that's watching right now. Have you received Ruach HaKodesh since you first believed? There's a lot of people out here that think that they have and have not. Because if it's easy for you to do sinful things like cussing or getting into arguments with people, if it's easy for you to do those things, if it's easy for you to still, for the works of the flesh to still manifest within you and you don't feel a conviction behind it, you have no conscience. Ruach HaKodesh is our conscience. He is the one that convicts us of our wrongs and, and makes us turn back to Yahuwah in repentance away from our sin. He's the one that allows us to confess and repent. Yahuwah's word says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So without Ruach HaKodesh, we are deceitful and deceptive. We have no conscience. Our conscience is seared as with a hot iron. So you have to receive Ruach HaKodesh. And our king gave us that example. Matthew 3, 16, 17. He was baptized with water by Yehukanan the Immerser. Then Ruach HaKodesh alighted upon him. For us, Ruach HaKodesh fills us. And then he was affirmed by the Father. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Then starting in uh, Matthew 4, verse 1, going to verse 11, it shows that Ruach HaKodesh led him into that wilderness to be tempted of Hashtan. That is how we all come in. That was our example. If we're not coming in through the door, because we're supposed to follow him, right? Take up our execution stake and follow him. Deny ourselves. Take up our execution stake and follow him. So if he did it, we have to do it. If anyone is not doing what he did, they are a, sh a thief and a robber. Because they're not entering into the sheepfold through the door. Yahushua is the door of the tabernacle of assembly. He's the door. So if we're not entering into the, through the door, who or from what way are we entering in? Ruach HaKodesh has to fill us. We have to be born of water and spirit. Have to be. So if you haven't received Ruach HaKodesh since you first believed, and if you're unsure if you have received Ruach HaKodesh since you first believed, that's probably a sign that you have not received Ruach HaKodesh since you first believed. Ask and you shall receive. No one needs to be there to lay their hands on you. No one needs to be there to do anything. I know in this history book, it says that Paul laid his hands on people when he asked them that question. But here's the thing. Our king is powerful enough to give you his Ruach where you are if you just ask of him. No one has to be there to lay their hands on you. He's more powerful than that. He was just showing us that that is one of the ways that it's possible. But he can do it from where he's at right now, from where you are and from where I am. I don't have to be there. Nobody else has to be there. But you, just, but ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. These were instructions on how to enter into his kingdom. And again, all this fear mongering that you see people doing about bug out bags and stockpiling resources, none of that will profit anything in the day of wrath. When Yahuwah comes back, I mean, when Yahuwah's wrath falls, I apologize, when Yahuwah's wrath falls upon this fallen world, none of that is going to matter. All of that's going to burn along with the rest of everything else. It's kindling for the fire. Yahuwah is able and willing to provide all on his own all on his own he doesn't need any of that stuff no it's not wisdom you'll hear a lot of people say oh it's wise to do these things no it's not it's fear it's fear mongering you have fear you're afraid and you doubt you have unbelief confess these sins to Yahuwah then repent he's moving us into a whole different realm we have to be spiritually minded and you can't be spiritually minded still focused on carnal things. Right now, we are to take the heart, I mean, take the posture of a servant bowing down to our king as we see him drawing nigh, going out into his harvest as laborers. And the last thing I'm going to say is when I think about the parable of the talents. 
you had three servants. One had five talents, one had two talents, and one had one talent. The one with five was honorable with that. They went out and, you know, doubled the talents. The one with two went out and doubled the talents. But then the one with one buried the talent. What does that look like in, in our, our day and age? Yahuwah revealing things to you and you staying quiet and you never saying anything to anyone. You're not going out into his harvest and laboring. You just keeping it all to yourself and waiting for him to come back and, and catch you up in the air. That's burying his talent. And what did it say in his parable? He took it from that unfaithful and dishonorable servant and he gave it to the one with five. He says, I am the vine. Abide in me. Let you be cut off and toss it to the fire. He's about to start cutting people off from his from his vine. Branches that are not adhering, that are not abiding in him. And there's, ooh, there's so much more I want to say because, you know, Leviticus talks about even, even that. You know, the Torah that we all, Torah, 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 that Torah has a lot more in it than we think it does has a lot more in it than we think it does he's had me in the book of leviticus for at least two or three months now at least that's how it feels he's had me in the book of Levit Levit leviticus for quite some time now because it's so much and just when i think up oh, i'm about to be in a different book he's like nope go back to this because there's so much more than what we're seeing and again ruach Amats will lead us into all truth but we have to be willing to seek these things out and nobody has time to hold nobody's hand in this thing. This is a matter of life and death, for real. Choose life. This is a matter of life and death. And we were given the instructions to choose life. I wanna say it's in Joshua. I'll put that, in, I'll put the, the scripture reference in the description of this video. I'll put all the scripture references in the description of this video so you can go back and you can try it. You can test these words. You need to test these words because anybody can get on here and say anything they want to to you and it could just be hogwash and fluff and all this other stuff. Test these words to see if they are true and faithful. Faithful and true. And if they are, then adhere to them. Do them. Let us be doers of the word and not just hearers only because eventually... That chopping block, we, we're going to be put on that chopping block. He's not playing, y'all. He is not playing. His grace was not for us to sit around twiddling our thumbs, wondering when he finna come back. Out here engaged in all the, the cares of this world and all this. That's not what his grace was for. His grace was for us to become his bride without spot or blemish. And we can't do that. Sipping on, choking on milk. Because that's what we're doing. We're choking on milk. Okay. I love you very much <laughs> otherwise i wouldn't get on here and say these things because please believe there's there's other things i could be doing with my day i'm supposed to be in here doing a job right now so other things i could be doing with my day than getting on here and talking to y'all but i love you guys and i would want someone to say these things to me as well so i would know the way i said the other thing was the last thing i apologize i'm gonna say this I have noticed that there's a lot of Gentiles out here. I had a Gentile ask me, well, how do I become part of the kingdom? Again, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. How would you respond to that? And this is a rhetorical question that you should be asking Yahuwah, so it's not really rhetorical, but I'm rhetorically asking you. How would you respond to that? Because if you're still drinking on milk, you don't have the proper response for that person. So basically that person has the opportunity to come in, but they won't come in through your gate. Each, each one of us that are naturally born are a gate, one of the 12 gates into the kingdom. They can't come in through your gate because your gate is closed. It, it's closed down due to repairs. I'm just saying you guys, fall on your face. Our King draws nigh, our redemption, our savior draws nigh. And he's, he's not going to stop coming. So <laughs> choose to say who you should serve. That's all I'm going to say. I love you guys. 
Shalom Alakim.